Good Friday afternoon, everybody. This is Chris Kabrelchik with Kyle Fisher from Hot Shot Secret. It's three o'clock on Friday, so it's time for our live Facebook live cast. I like to call it a podcast, but they keep telling me that's not <laughs> the right word. It's a cold Friday here. Yeah. Did Did we cover the Apex show last week? SEMA. Uh, I don't. We touched on it a little bit, but I don't think uh, we really got into it. Chris has been gone. I've been gone for two weeks. I just got back from, from the SEMA show. It was a great show. We've seen a lot of influencers out there. We talked to a lot of our competitors and a lot of partners, and it's going to be a good year. We're going to have some new products coming up this year, so hopefully you'll hear more about that in the upcoming months. Um, and then you followed that up with the EY Growth Forum in Palm Springs. So I spent a week in Las Vegas and a week in Palm Springs. Then I came to not so sunny Ohio where it's snowing outside. And welcome back. Yeah, I'm getting depressed just being here. But <laughs> we have this stuff going on, so that's exciting. Yeah, we got a lot of good stuff going on. And th this week we have a web special. Yep, all right stock in front of me bundle. here. The uh, winter stock up bundle. Uh, you're going to get a quart of Stiction Eliminator, uh, 16 ounce of Diesel Extreme, and five 16 ounce squeeze of our. D-Wag, Diesel Winter Anti-Gel. So it's, uh, it's a great winter uh, prep uh, package here and it's going for uh, 99 bucks for the whole package here. So it's a great way to get everything you need to get ready for the cold months ahead. Can I, let me explain why that's important. The reason we have Stiction Eliminator and Diesel Extreme together this time of year is really important is during the summertime, the oil gets warm or stays warm because it's warm outside the stiction starts to build up inside the engine on, on the cams, inside the injectors if you have an oil-fired injector, all over in there. And same way on the fuel side, we get a little bit of varnish building up in different places. As long as everything's warm and flowing good, nobody notices a difference. But as soon as it gets cold, it gets hard and things start slowing down. Uh, in the past, I've used the example of it's like cholesterol. You know, it's building up in your system, but it's not until you try to run five miles that you have the heart attack. And that's what happens this time of year. You go out and your truck is really slow to crank because the battery's weak because it's cold. But also your that stiction's building up and this is the best time to get that cleaned out. Or if you don't get it cleaned out, you're gonna end up spending more money on it later on. So I've always recommended using the stiction eliminator first uh, with the diesel extreme to get everything cleaned out. And then of course, you need winter anti-gel if you're in a cold climate. Sure. So we put that bundle together to make it easy for you. It's only $99 and Remember to subscribe to our email newsletter and you'll be able to see specials that are coming up. We also try to put tech tips and explain different things that are happening. A lot of times we'll do a deep dive into products on that also. Right. So a chance to learn more about the product if you're interested in that kind of thing. And, and also one last thing with the winter stock up bundle. This is the winter stock up bundle. Each one of these 16 ounce squeeze, I'm, uh, I believe we're at 125 gallons of fuel each. So you're talking 625 gallons of fuel here. That's going to get you through the winter. Just one purchase now, 99 bucks at the beginning of the year, uh, beginning of the season, you're good to go. So this year, or today, this week's talk, we're going to talk a little bit about the FR3. Um, FR3 is one of our one of our proprietary technologies, which means we've invented this, and it, it took a long time, two or three years, and it, it came off of our, our new. Um, it's not new now, but two years ago it was a new version of the Stiction Eliminator. So just to give you a little background on how this started, the original section elim eliminator was made for Ford or, or for Navistar that was making the Ford engine. We wanted to upgrade it and make it even better. We wanted to have more lubricating properties and more cleaning properties. And the goal that we set out to research and development was to be able to clean stiction 30% better than our old formula and to lubricate better than anything on the shelf. Now, when I say lubricate better than anything on the shelf, we wanted to compare it with products like RevX, Motorcoat, STP. So the idea was pull all these products off. One of the effects of the stiction is it slows the engine down. It slows the startup down. Sometimes it makes the engine not work at all. If it's like an in, inside of an injector or a turbo, it, it can literally stop it. When you put the stiction eliminator in, at least the older version, it would clean that up and it would take 500 to 1,000 gallons. Or, I'm sorry, 500 to 1,000 miles, miles to get that done. Because it's cleaning, it's like putting um, soap into a laundry cycle. It just takes time to get it all clean, right? Well, some people were using products that would give them a quick fix. It would lubricate things. There's things out there like nanoborates, and they have a quick effect. They make things slippery, but then you're not really getting rid of, rid of the stiction. 
So what I want to do is get rid of the and, stiction. And vice versa. There's some stiction cleaners out there that won't lubricate. Correct. That's right. So you got to put them in and dump them right away. So what, exactly. So what we wanted to do was, you know, we want something that was staying there for the whole oil change. Not only would it slowly clean the stiction away, but it also give you an immediate effect of lubricating everything better than anything else you could buy on the shelf. This was a long process because when you're working with chemical companies, uh, you know, they're kind of like additive companies sometimes. It's a lot of marketing and not a lot of meat. Um, so they would say, well, this is the best or this is the best. So what we did is we went to almost every company we could find around the world, um, literally around the world, and said, bring us your product and we're going to test them all on the same basis. So the idea was let's, let's compare them on the same testing level and see which ones are the, you know, the A class, the B class, and the C class. We, we looked through all the different ASTM tests, um, you know, American Society of Testing Measures, ASTM is a standard. And we, we chose one called a G133. Now, the way the G133 works. Uh oh, he's breaking out I'm the whiteboard. I'm bringing out the whiteboard, man. If you guys don't know Chris, he loves a whiteboard. Uh, I can't talk without a whiteboard. So, the way, the way the G133 works is they're taking a pin on plate and they're rubbing it back and forth, say 40,000 times over an eight hour period with the exact same amount of force on it. And then when they give you back the, the results, they're giving you a profile of the metal. And it looks kind of like this. And what we're measuring is how much, how much metal did we gouge out? And, and by comparing the different results, you could see uh, which one has the least amount of friction, at least sliding friction in this case. But the measurement is done in millimeters squared, which looks like this. And so to say, what's the volume that we took out? So again, so this is your metal surface, and this is how much has been worn away Correct. as it rubs. Yeah, so the plate would be going this way, and the pin would be moving back and forth towards the camera. And when we, when we started with was Shell Rotella, because it's the number one selling diesel oil, and we use that as our baseline. So Shell Rotella was... 0.0835 millimeters squared. So we use that as our base. And then we tested everything we can, literally everything we can buy off the shelf, you know, motor coat, um, STP, Rev RevX was or RevX, Z Max, because we want some baselines. Like how much do these products really move the mark? And then how can we keep working with products until we get one that's better? So when we got done testing, blending, looking for synergies with other products, we brought in, we ended up with three patented products, and that's how we came up with the name of FR3. Which is a common question we get. It's, you know, friction reducer, three patented products, you know, that's my brilliant marketing. <laughs> and where we ended up when we were done was 0314. Now, these numbers don't look like much, but when you look at the profiles, they look more like this. So there was actually a 62% reduction in wear. That was a phenomenal reduction in wear. So I said, okay, we're on to something. So then we moved on to what was a scrub test and we wanted to see how much, how much of the, the stiction we were able to remove. And in that point, we were able to remove 30% more stiction than our old formula and more than anybody else on the market. So it, it was a hit. We took that and we extrapolated into our FR3 formula. So this was actually the original S, the um, stiction eliminator and then we brought it over to FR3. And that's, that's how we got to where we're at. So you're gonna get a reduction in wear, faster startups, and one of the things to keep in mind with additives, because it is, I mean, let's face it, additives are tricky. I mean, they're, they're, this is a tricky field. You're buying something, dumping it in your engine. Is it really doing anything? Who knows? I mean, it's really hard to tell unless you're doing a dyno or a scientific test. So we do all the testing for you, and we try to be as transparent with that. We, we publish, white papers on our website. You can get all this information and see how we how we come up with these products. Um, and that's really what we're going to do today is, um, we've talked about FR3 before, um, we can tell you all about the product, but we're going to dive down mm -hmm. into a little bit of the science and the testing that we do behind it um, to give the customer the confidence that, that they're buying a product that's going to work for them. And, and feel free to ask questions. Again, yep, we're totally transparent. Below. You put a question in, Levi will let us know or Kyle will pull it up. Challenge us. Yeah, Bring we're, we're, there's no no secrets. Well, there are some secrets, but as well, far as the testing the, goes, there's no secrets. The patents are secret. Yeah, the patents are secret, <laughs> the product we used. Um, but they, you know, in essence, what we were able to get was more horsepower, reduced wear. Um, what the tricky part here is, and, and this is something for all, anybody who's into additives, anybody's additive, some additives, if you put too much in or after a certain amount of time, they become um, what's called a salt. So 
So like even like molybdenum disulfide, it's a great friction reducer. Uh, it does reduce friction, but then at a certain point it becomes a salt and becomes corrosive in the system. Nanoborates are really slippery, but then they become a salt. Uh, sometimes people use chlorinated paraffins, like uh, the motor coat product or Duralube, but eventually that chlorinated paraffin becomes a hydrochloric acid. The, mm -hmm. the chlorine breaks off, it bonds with the hydrogen, becomes hydrochloric acid, and starts to become corrosive. Right. What we're using are carbon and esters, so it's completely safe. I mean, the whole engine's made out of carbon, so it's... And the esters, know, group five esters are... Yeah, I mean, finest, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's the most expensive esters you can buy, and they have really unique properties. There's literally there's literally thousands of different asters. And, and that's an important point to make there too. When when we begin to formulate something and, and to invent a new product like that, uh, one thing like you've always said is, let's make it the best it possibly can. Like if money's not an object, we got to sell a bottle for a thousand dollars a bottle, you know, let's make the best possible product we can. And that's where these group five esters are coming in and mm -hmm. everything. And then at the end of it, once we've developed it, it becomes, is it sellable? Can, right. Is it, right. Or is it too expensive to even sell to the market? Well, that, that's a different way of going to market than our competitors, because a lot of times, most most of our competitors, I'm not trying to generalize, but for the most part, they're in it to make money. You know, they're looking at, their, their life is ruled by shelf space on a retail shelf. So we have to move a thousand of these units. To do that, we have to charge $3 or $4. In order um, to do that, we got to use yeah. less. You so know. yeah, and we got to run specials, and you know, you buy three, you get a free tool bag, or you buy six of these, and we're going to send you a wrench. I mean, those kinds of things. They're they're market driven. And we're on the problem. worst end, putting bad chemicals in it. Correct. You know, and that's and that's the problem is they're money driven. Where we're looking for the problem, we're we're really about solving problems here, and that's from the very first product we made all the way up. It's what can we do to make people's lives better? How is this going to resolve an issue? And we have. I don't know how many, but probably dozens of other things that we have created that don't have a place in the market, but we've learned from that technology. So what I've learned as the CEO of the company is allowing this process to continue, we learn a lot. And then it might not be something that we can leverage today, but two years from now, it can come. Matter of fact, this exact story happened last week in SEMA. Mm -hmm. You know, we were talking to a client and they said, you know, this is the problem we're having and this is the price point and we don't know what we're going to do. And I smiled and they said, well, why are you smiling at my misery? I said, because I just happened to have come up with a product six months ago that meets exactly what you're asking for. And we haven't done anything with it because we didn't have a place for it in our lineup. Right. So, you know, we'll sell it to them to put under their label. We learned from it. Absolutely. But it wasn't a product we were going to go to market with. And Correct. so it was just kind of sitting there as knowledge to us. And, and, and I said, you know, we have all, we have the, we have the, you know, the entire formula ready to go. We can have it blended up in a week or two. Mm -hmm. So we, we've learned that as far as an innovative company goes, this is a good way to keep things going. We keep moving things forward um, by inventing, by testing, by doing research and development. That's what drives us. And you know, and th that that should go to say here too, to kind of I'll bring I'll bring Chris down from tech land into more of a layman's terms. That's the difference in uh, a product that's going to get have that type of result right there. Mm -hmm. And now what it means to the, the 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 vehicle owner right there, this this reduction in wear, for example, your engine's going to last twice as long. Right. So either that, or if you're buying a used car, an older car, mm -hmm. it's a, the wear's already been done, but oh. we can cease it. We can stop it right there. So if you're looking at buying a used car that's maybe a high mileage car and it's still running pretty good, you can pretty much stop time right there. And more importantly, on the front end of it, if, you have a, if you're buying a newer vehicle, well, we can, re we can stop that wear from happening right, right. right at the beginning and slow that down to give you longer longevity out of the vehicle. And that, that's a really good point. I, I get that comment. I get the comment a lot from marketing, especially our e-commerce manager, Carmen. You know, she said, you're not telling what that means to the average person. You're stuck in this kind of thinking, which is where I live. So, so we try to translate for Chris. Yeah. <laughs> but to, to Kyle's point, this came to a head, uh, I don't know, about six months ago when my 16-year-old son got a driver's license, was buying a car, and he's looking at different cars. And he's, he says, well, why would I want to spend that much money on a car with 80,000 miles when I could buy this car with 150,000 miles, save $3,000? And he ended up with like a $3,000 Toyota Corolla. And he says, I'll just put FR3 in it. The engine will last forever or as long as I need it to. And then I don't have to worry about it. Right. I like, that's a good point. Yep. I, I didn't think about it that way, but he did. So, I'm shopping for a cheap car right now. There you a go. little winter beater. So I'll, I don't mind the high mileage. I'll find something running good. And just treat some, it. Yep. Yep. And that's what we did with this. We put uh, six eliminator, then FR3. Yep. 
So it's, it's a great way to go. So Kyle's going to talk. We're going to talk a little bit about the dinos and more of the science behind it. If you have questions about the chemistry, the testing, how we have arrived at it, um, again, bring the questions on. We'll be glad to explain it to you. We love talking about I love talking about this kind of stuff more than anything else. Yeah, so let's get into a little bit about the FR3. Um, uh, we, we've talked about what the product does a lot, but let's talk about a little bit of the testing. Um, I see Larson Miller just jumped in. Hey, Larson, we're actually about to talk about Fire Pump because Fire Pump Diesels, where we did some dyno testing with the product. So, um, and that's also in one of our uh, white papers here. It's case study 1703A. We do have these, make these public so everybody can see them. Um, and what, what we did with this testing was we wanted to measure horsepower and, and torque gains on a dyno, dyno uh, third party with Fire Punk. And we actually had two vehicles. It was a 2007 Dodge Ram 2500 and a 2000, uh, uh, two 6.7 Cummins engines. And the way we conducted the test was we started with baseline poles on the dyno. We did five baseline poles. We averaged those out. And in this case, we did on a stock tune, as you get from the dealership. And then we, they, we had Fire Punk put one of their performance tunes in, do another five poles baseline, and got our, our measurements for um, our horsepower and torque gains, so, or, or baseline on that. And if you want me to jump in the numbers right away? Sure, go ahead. So on, uh, oh, I'm sorry, we didn't even mention. When we do this, not only are we me trying to measure how our product does, but we uh, measured against some of the competition as well, actually. This was our, our competitor X we used. And, and so we actually tested against that on one and, and ours on another to give not just a baseline against our product, but a baseline against one of the top uh, products on the So uh, how on much the would it improve it? And there's one thing we forgot to mention. FR3 goes into your engine oil. It, yeah. it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's an additive that, that goes in the engine oil and it, it coats the metal inside and it makes it, it increases the film strength of the oil. I should have mentioned that also. One of the unique properties of this product over everything else that we tested from around the world is that it hooks the carbon chains together to make it a thicker film strength. So you get more combustion power, but also it, it fills in all the crevices with little tiny carbon beads so that it literally plates the inside and gives you like roller bearings everywhere. And, and that's, and it, I wish we had our animation on that, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, from a microscopic level, I mean, you're gonna have imperfections in, in the metal in, inside your engine, even a brand new motor. Correct. A brand new motor that has machining marks in it. And so those little microscopic, I mean, nano sized carbon balls mm -hmm. will actually fill those voids in the metal that give you that, that solid base, a flat film base to actually to build our film on. Mm -hmm. As opposed to, if you don't fill those, you're gonna have jagged edges that pull away your lubricant levels. And, Correct, and, and, you, and, you and, always have asparities. And and when you look, here we go. <laughs> and when you're looking at- Can you at, see this? Okay, good. When you're looking at, when you're looking at the metal surfaces, they actually look like this. And then the top one looks like this. No, so. And that is to the human eye, a polished surface. It, it, yeah, we're this, talking nano sized. Th this could be. Um, th this Cylinder could, wall. Oh, this could be mirror finished and it's going to look like this. It doesn't, I mean, it's just, that's the way it is. And then the more pressure you put this way and this way, eventually these things start breaking off. And this is your normal wear and tear on your engine. And that's the metal that we find when we do oil analysis tests. Yeah. And yep. When you do your oil analysis and you see the iron, that's what it's coming from. The, the more these surfaces come together, the thinner the film strength, the more they're going to crush. The thicker, the more they stay apart. And that's always the balance on an engine oil, not to get sidetracked, which I do. <laughs> um, you know, you, the thicker oil helps when you're really putting a lot of pressure on it. The thinner oil helps when you're starting your car up and you want that oil to get into all those little nooks and crevices. Um, that's why we have like a 5W30. And for those of you that don't know, W stands for? Winter. Winter, that's right, this stands for winter. So in essence, what they're doing is they're making it a little bit thinner when it's colder and it gets thicker as it gets warmer. And that's to, to make this film strength increase. So what we're able to do is not just thicken up the oil or keep the film strength higher, but we're able to put little, little tiny bearings along these ridges to help them roll back and forth better. And that, that is shown or demonstrated best in this test right here where we're able to see that we have less wear than just the engine oil itself. Sorry, I get sidetracked. Go oh, ahead. I'm just bored. Um, so getting back to the dyno test, uh, well, we, we tested the uh, competitor first and 
we did the five stock baseline to, uh, pulls on that. The average was 349.44 horsepower. Uh, we added the competitor product to the oil. Uh, we let it idle for 30 minutes on the dyno um, and then did five more pulls right after that. And the net was, or the average was 353.48. So it was a 4.04 .04 horsepower gain. There's a four horsepower gain on that, which equates to 1.1% horsepower gain. Uh, the torque was negligible. There was virtually no torque gain at all. Um, and then we went to the performance tune uh, the, the, uh, from Firepunk that they put on the, uh, the Cummins motor. The performance tune actually baseline was 428.42. Uh, again, uh, added the competitor product, idled for 30 minutes, did five more poles, averaged those, and it came out to 430.38, which is a 1.86 horsepower increase for 0.04%. And there was only a, a 0.8 foot-pound of tor torque, less than one foot-pound of torque difference. So that's what that's the test results that came back on one of the top competitors in the market. So it's doing something. Not much. And um, so then we went to second test, which was our FR3. And the results on that were... Let me interrupt you for one sure. second. And the reason we switched to another truck right. was because now that the engine's been treated with anything, whether it's our product or anything, it's no longer a good test study. So when we're doing these types of dynos, we're not looking to prove our product. We're looking to find scientific data. Right. There's no expectation going in. So we don't try to skew it one way or the other. Um, you know, we could have added our product there, we could have drained the oil and tried it again, but then how much of the effect was from the product that was left in there versus our product? So what we did, we started off with a brand new virgin truck, had no additives, go ahead, we pulled the five baselines. Well, and, and to that point, it's it's kind of funny around here often, is if anybody gets a, a new car around here, we're like, don't put anything in it yet, mm -hmm. because you can't put the genie back in the bottle. And we actually are still really kind of trying to figure out how long FR3 lasts, mm -hmm. you know, after you've taken it out. So say you put it in an oil change and you don't put it in your next oil change, you're still gonna have benefit from the from the carbon uh, balls bonding here. Now, we're still trying to figure out exactly how long. I think we might have some really fun testing maybe next year to figure that out. We're, we're in the process of buying a dyno so we could do even more testing, but yeah, it is, it's a tricky thing. What we think we should do is like get rental cars and then drain the oil out of them, see how long they last. You and then, that <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Never mind. Forget I said that. Go back to your back to your test. So uh, on the second truck, um, we did the on the stock tune, stock tune from from Dodge. The baseline was 331 horsepower, and after adding FR3, idling for 30 minutes on the dyno, then doing five more pulls, averaging those, uh, we averaged 346 horsepower, is a 15 horsepower increase which is 4.3% horsepower gain. So a considerable difference there. Um, what was the percent? 4.3. <coughs> so, and, and I know we got a lot of performance fans out there that follow our Facebook you know, page, obviously. Uh, a lot of you guys know how much it costs to add horsepower to a mm -hmm. vehicle, especially when you're at the kind of the peak of performance. And to be able to add uh, 15 horsepower, and it was 18 foot pounds of torque as well, just by pouring an additive in and letting it idle for in 30 minutes. It, We're it, talking 10 bucks, right? Right. And, and I mean, that, that price per, per horsepower is, is Huge. yeah. So, uh, uh, so then we went to the performance tune, the fire pump performance tune on the truck, and we saw even more. So the baseline on the performance tune uh, uh, before product was 460.94 horsepower. Uh, again, out of the FR3, idled for 30 minutes, did five pulls. After five pulls, we, we averaged 478.44. It was a 17.5 horsepower gain. And on top, which is 3.7%. And on top of that, it was a 25.8 uh, foot pounds of torque gain as well. So to gain 25 foot pounds of torque, you know, another 17 horsepower, uh, you're talking a considerable gain just with adding an oil additive in there. Um, it goes to show what the lubricity does in there, uh, how much, and then and to have the extra benefits of having the wear protection on top of that. That wear protection is not adding horsepower, it's protecting the motor. That's right. So there's there's multiple benefits from it, but, mm -hmm. uh, and again, we have this stuff published. Um, it's, you're welcome to see the results yourself. People, you know, in our world, 
it, this is the one that blows people's mind the most. They just really can't believe that you can pour something in your oil and pick up horsepower like that. Well, it's because everybody thinks of it as snake oil. Right. I mean, it, and I, I understand that. And Again. that's why we do this, though. That's exactly why we do the research. We, it, we, and, you know, we welcome our customers to do the same. You know, if you've got access to a dyno, give it a test. Before you put it in, in, in if you're a shop owner or something, uh, go ahead and test it yourself. Throw it on the dyno before and after and tell us your results. Because what about fuel economy? Fuel economy tests that we've done in the past, and we, we literally have probably hundreds of these. And we've been able to get a consistent 5% increase in fuel economy. Correct. So what that would mean to the average person, if you're driving anything out there, like a Toyota Corolla or Ford truck, if you're driving a Ford truck, even a gas truck, you're getting probably 15 miles per gallon, um, if you're lucky. On $2.50 gas, that's gonna save you about 12 and a half cents per gallon. So this this kind of blows my mind a little bit. If you're looking at one gas station that's 250. The people across the street. Are, 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 yeah, are 238. Yeah. Which one are you going to? You know, And you're getting a premium product because now your engine's wearing out half as fast and you're getting more horsepower. So I'm getting more horsepower, my engine's wearing out half as fast, and it's saving me 12 cents per gallon on every gallon of gas I get. How do you not do that? You know, so. How do we have any of this in stock? Shouldn't uh, it all be going? Yeah, nobody <laughs> believes us. We got but, some questions. You want to go to some questions? Sure, that sounds good. All right, let's see. We have Eric Daniel says, do you have any test papers on gas engines? I don't see any on the website. I assume he's talking about FR3. I believe we did a, um, uh, we had a Harley test. There's, yeah, there's a Harley where we got 5% increase in horsepower mm -hmm. on a Harley, and there's probably not one on gas. Oh, I think, didn't we do the, uh, that Saab? Yeah. Oh, that was transmission. Tran transmission section limit. Okay, this is the reason why we don't have gas and it's my fault. <laughs> we, we have focused so much on diesel. That's how we got our start. That's where we specialized in, and we stayed as a heavy duty company for all this time. And then last year, you know, we started thinking, okay, a lot of these products cross over. Like the FR3, we started seeing a trend in, in automotive, in the gas automotive industry where everything's got turbos on it now, and they are, they're building up stiction. We found carbon packing in Toyotas. We're having problems with hydraulic lifters in Chevys. So then it was like, okay, we have the right products that go into gas. We started testing them and they were working. It's like, okay, what do we do from a marketing standpoint? If we start saying it's good for gas or diesel, do we lose this, you know, solid diesel following or should we rebrand it as gas? And so to that point, we haven't gotten that far yet. It does work in gas. The effects are there. We just haven't built that end of the marketing arm up. And that's pretty much because of Kyle. He's just a <laughs> slacker. So <laughs> we will get R and D to do, and you know, like as you mentioned, there might be a uh, dyno being added here soon. So mm -hmm. those type of testing is going to become a lot easier to us because uh, till now we don't really have an in-house dyno. So that's why we're traveling to people like Firepunk and stuff to use their stuff. So I imagine once the dyno's in here, and we we'll have slap done. a gas car on there and do yeah, it. So, well, we've done gas tests. Oh, yeah. Now, we just haven't published them in a white right. We do thousands of tests that we don't publish. So th this is how we do it. We get a car that hasn't had any additive added to it. We take it up the freeway and we get in the slow lane we, and we have to wait for a day where the temperature and the barometric pressure and the winds are pretty much the same. We can't have a day where it rains at noon. That doesn't work. Right. So we, most of this happens during the summer and in the spring. And we hit a mile marker. We, we, hook, we hook up an OBD2 sensor to the port and then pull up a, like an iPad or a Samsung and we bring up the, uh, what's the name of that software? The GPS stuff? Uh, the one that gives you all the details on the engine. Oh, your, uh, your CAN bus stuff. For yeah, but it pulls up everything that's happening in the engine. So we, hit a, we go 55 miles an hour, and we stay in the slow lane, so everybody has to go around us. We set the cruise control, and then we reset the computer at, say, like mile marker 155. And then we drive to mile marker 200, and we capture the screen. We get off the freeway, we add something, whether it's a gas additive or FR3 or some other oil additive we're testing. We drive all the way back, and then start the whole thing over. We try to keep the cruise control set at the exact same spot. We reset the computer and do the exact same piece of ground, same temperature, same barometric pressure. Same direction. So yeah, it's, hills it's, the yeah it's, a, it's the exact same test. So then when we're done, we should have two screenshots that say, you know, you were on the road for 50.32 minutes. Your average RPMs were 1400. Everything should match except for fuel economy. Right. So if, if everything matches and you see one that says, you know, 26.2, the other one that's 25.3, we know we got a difference. So that's, 
it's a great way to do a test. The problem is you're limited by weather conditions. So what we're doing now is buying a dyno so we can do eight hour tests in our facility, uh, you know, consistently like five days a week and really test them out and publish those results. So it's coming soon. It is coming soon. Uh, we have, uh, well, David Berg responded liquid tune up in a bottle. He said, he was responding to Eric, said he uses FR3 in his 05 GMC uh, L6 and it increased his mileage and on a gas motor there. Um, uh, Evan Trace says, amazing considering it's an oil product. That's true for, for the gains we see. Uh, hello, Marianne, good seeing you. What's, Carmen wants to know what's in the red drink. <laughs> it's 750. <laughs> it's just water. <laughs> Diesel extreme. No, yeah. it's, it's just water. We actually thought it was uh, our, our 750,000 mile coolant earlier, but don't try that at home. Uh, two th Eric Kano says 2019 testing in some regular and tuned gas inches. Sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do some tuned engines as well. Yeah, we've seen, we've seen some differences in, um, I think it's a Chevy Equinox. I think Kevin was telling me that they had a bad tapping noise and I think they have a hydraulic lifter right and He's he said about this. they tried several products and nothing really moved the bar moved the bar very much then they put the stiction eliminator in there and it made it completely go away mm -hmm. and he was you know that's our chemical engineer Kevin you've seen him on here before he was really excited about it. and he said you know this is an area where we can really affect change sure. so you know the next step is for R&D to start looking for area which vehicles have hydraulic lifters and then how can we do a test? Maybe we'll come on to Facebook and offer free samples for people that can do it and bring us back your feedback. Mm -hmm. But I, I can absolutely see why that would work because on those hydraulic lifters, you would start to build up stiction from the heat. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in essence- well, It's similar to the hemi testing we're doing right now. Exactly, the, exactly the right. The modern Mopar hemi tick testing we've got underway mm -hmm. right now. So um, that's what we're looking for there as well. But when you're thinking about the inside of that engine, you know, you can see what the oil temperature is, but that doesn't, that doesn't equate to what the oil temperature is on specific areas, certain spots. So if you have something that's um, doesn't have a lot of oil movement or there's extra friction there, it could easily get to three, four hundred degrees, which is going to shear the oil and burn it on there. Mm -hmm. Just like putting oil in a frying pan, you know, if you get it too hot, it burns. Then you got that sticky, oily stuff that's on there that you got to mm -hmm. clean off. Um, so that's that's in essence what we're doing. We're, and, we're cleaning that. And, and and one thing about the gas market too is as well. As you mentioned, uh, originally the, the, these products were, were developed in a, in a diesel market, which gives us a lot of experience and expertise in it. But as we're seeing now, as the industry is changing, it's going to a lot of these smaller, mm -hmm. and the gas side of things, going to a lot, of, a lot of small engine turbos. I think we just had a report yesterday we were reading, that, was it about 50%? 50% of the cars by 2020 are gonna have turbos. Right, now, so, we're actually uniquely positioned that we, I mean, we can see the future right now. That's our specialty. I mean, we that's know exactly there's going to be at. some problems down the road, as, as, especially as a lot of people who have just lived in the gas world and never had a turbo car before. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we know what's ahead. So, uh, and, and speaking to the turbo in particular, one thing I always like to remind people about it is um, maybe you can describe better about turbo bearings and mm -hmm. how you know they get to such an extreme temperature but to keep them moving keep them lubricated you're good but at the shutdown of the vehicle yeah that's when it all goes bad because yeah that that turbo bearing and it's just really like a big blow dryer you know it's only the size of this pen the the, the width of a pen and it's spinning and it's pulling exhaust gases that are 2000 degrees and it's pumping it into your cylinder to give you extra power it's increasing the compression inside there in the pressure Okay, the problem is you have 2,000 degree gases. And I, when I used to drive semi truck, our, my turbo would turn red cherry hot. Oh, yeah. I mean, it would literally be red. And so what you're supposed to do, if you read your manual, which- Nobody does. I've never done that. But <laughs> if you did read the manual, it would tell you with a turbo charge, you, you, when you pull in, you're supposed to let it sit in idle for five or 10 minutes. And what you're doing is you're allowing that turbo to spin down and cool off because the oil's in the center is a little bearing with a little tiny port of oil coming in. So you want to get it cooled off before you turn it off. Well, when you, you turn it off, that port stops. Absolutely, it just the whole thing shuts down. So you've got maybe one thimble full of oil in there. Trying to yeah, cool at, it at a thousand degrees. degrees. Yeah, yeah so it's just sizzling. I mean, you're literally, you have a little tiny thimble full of oil sizzling on that turbo bearing. 
So when you go to start the next day, you've got a layer of stiction yep. because it's all burnt on there. And then you do it again the next day and the next day and the next day. And, and this happens with every single turbo on earth. Absolutely. And and yep. and especially at least the people in the diesel community that are used to having turbos, at least some of them are pretty, are conscious of it. But as more gas cars get introduced to turbos, it's going to be a big problem until people kind of yeah. understand that a little bit better. That's funny, you know, it, you just remind me of a story. Before we ever introduced Stiction Eliminator, back when I was just building product for Navistar and nobody had, I mean, we didn't have a name for it or anything. Right. Uh, my brother-in-law was a, a hot shotter. He hauled campers from Indiana to Florida or wherever in the country. He lived in Arizona and he had a Ford six liter engine. Hmm. And Huey injectors. Yeah, with Huey injectors. And he stopped by our house one time and you know, he's talking about the six liter engine and this and that. So I said, well, here's something I'm working on. You should try this. And I, again, I didn't even have a name for it at the time. So he put it in there. He called me, uh, it was about two days later. And he says, I, he, goes, I, he goes, it was the weirdest thing. He said, I shut my truck off. I went to fill up at a Speedway to get diesel. And he said, I heard this, because it's like a jet engine going underneath my hood. He goes, I never heard that before. Yep. He said, I'm thinking, what the heck is going on? I popped the hood. He goes, my turbo was it's spinning. Still spinning. Yeah. yeah, he said, and he goes, that thing had never done that. And it's because we freed up all that stiction when he shut it off, it still had so much momentum, it kept spinning and, and we, it made we get it a lot. Customers yeah. call in a lot and say that, you know, after shutdown, they hear that, that turbo just still spinning and winding yeah. down. Because once you free that stiction from it, you, it's you, exa exactly. that's what they're designed to do. So it, it shows you, if yours isn't doing that, <laughs> that's right. you know, it, and that just makes you, it's making your turbo work harder mm -hmm. for less efficiency, so. Um, well, and you're getting less boost. I, right. mean, I mean, think about this, the whole reason of having that turbo is to pull hot gas and pump it into those cylinders to give you more more pressure, to give you more power. You slow that down, you know, it's like running in water. You know, if you're mm -hmm. running in the kiddie pool, you're not gonna run as fast as if you're on blacktop. And that's exactly what the turbo is doing. It's, it's being slowed down so you're not getting power. Your fuel economy will go down. Um, I, there's no way around it. If you look at, oh, like a Volkswagen, the first year you had it, you were probably getting 50 miles per gallon the second and third year you're down to 45 miles per gallon and you put one bottle of stiction eliminator in there and you'll be back up to 50 miles per gallon all right uh, a couple more we got uh evan tracy said your product took my semi from 6.7 mile per gallon to 7.4 mile per gallon so that's that's pretty sad. that's a 10 percent fuel yeah. economy gain that adds up when yeah. you know, those big trucks on the road that's huge that's that's a over the truck yeah, he actually said that's another fifty five hundred dollars in his pocket every year. Yeah. So I mean that's that's that and that's that's a good return on your investment. <laughs> exactly. Way better than my Nintendo stock is doing. <laughs> right. Uh Rich Frenzel, hey Rich, how are you, bud? Uh would I see benefit using FR three in another vendor's custom blended oil for a Hemi? Also use their fuel additive. I know which oil he's talking about, because I know Rich. Yes, it'll work in anybody's oil. Yep. Again, we're the, the secret of FR3 or what makes it so um, unique and powerful is it's 100% active ingredients. There are no fillers. Um, there's, uh, you know. Which we should mention, it's the treatment ratio on, on FR3 is one and a half ounces per quart. Right. And at that, in that one and a half ounces per quart, it is fully formulated. We, you know, like we've said before, some of our retailers sometimes want us to put filler in so mm -hmm. the customer feels like they're walking away with a bigger bottle off the shelf and you know chris we just refuse to do that so it's uh it's, it's at the peak optimum uh dosage and it's hard to do i'm telling you it's really hard to do <laughs> <laughs> because the temptation is there especially on the fuel additive side you know because you know the, the, the thought process is if i could buy a gallon jug for 25 dollars, why am i going to pay 50 dollars for a half a gallon jug can't you just put it in a gallon jug and add some stuff to it. It's like, no. Well, it's, and then also- I feel the, like that's dishonest. It's like, that's not who we started the company as. That's not right. who we are. You know, we, we're straight up honest with everybody. We don't mm -hmm. hide anything. We tell you everything about what's going on. Uh, you know, so we don't, I don't want to go down that road ever. Uh, so yeah, the answer is yes, Rich. You can throw a FR3 um, in their oil. It, well, you, you put FR3 in, in any oil, yeah. not just engine oil. Yeah. But we can put this in in pretty much any in a closed system, any hydraulic system. Uh, it, it's a, it, I put it in my lawnmower. Great in power steering. Actually, we're about to do a power steering test. And we are doing a power steering. If you have a power steering, especially if you have big tires, and you put just a little bit of FR3, like uh, two ounces to three ounces, mm. 
I, it makes a huge difference. I mean, you. I'm it's five percent dose, so you got to make sure what your power, what your power steering reservoir is. So, but you, there's, it's one of those areas that you can absolutely see a difference. Twenty five seconds later, I mean, you can. Your wine's go, gone. You can oh, one yeah. finger turn. Oh yeah, you could you could literally go in and you know you're turning like this in a parking lot. You could put that in there and you can go in there with one hand and move it. You yep. can you can see a difference. You can feel a difference. I'll tell you someplace else I've used it that I've found phenomenal results is two cycle oil. You know, chainsaws. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, man, I was, we, we cut a lot of wood out here in Ohio. And, you know, just the power and the um, smoothness of the engine and the startup. And, you know, I forget about this stuff sometimes. So I'm out there trying to get my steel chainsaw started up to go mm -hmm. cut wood. And it's like, man, what's wrong here? And I, I seen a bottle of FR3 on the shelf. I'm like, hmm, let me try that. But put a splash in there and boom, man, that thing yep. started right up and it was it was going hard. So it's a really and, good two cycle out of it. And are we have some like generator testing coming? We do, we're testing which, it on generators. For that, it goes to the same for generators. Generators sit there until they're needed. Mm -hmm. And then you're expecting them to start when, you know, when they're ready to go. So uh, it, it smooths that startup process as well. Uh, get some more questions, Chris. Tom Tom G, what would happen if you used FR3 in one oil change but not the subsequent oil changes. How long or how many oil changes would you see FR3 benefits for? We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> we are going to find out. Um, that's that's on our list because that's come up a lot at the SEMA show last week. Um, a lot of the other vendors and the people were asking us that question. We do know. We didn't think about it that way. We're, we were trying right. to solve a problem. We solved the problem, we got to that point, nobody ever thought to check it, like how many oil changes we, will last we week. We do know that the bonding it makes to the metal with the with the nanocarbon balls um, does last after it's out of the engine. Yes. So if you if you if you are on your next oil change and you forgot your bottle of FR3 and you just went with straight oil in the motor, you still will see benefits of the remnants of FR3. How long we haven't really pinned down yet. We don't like to say unless we know. We're gonna Correct. we're gonna test on that and we'll give you an exact answer. We'll be on back that. here telling you about and, and this is a two piece thing going on here. One, we're increasing the film strength, and I know that's kind of a hard concept to think about, but you know, if you can imagine the rings going down on the on the piston, they're they're around the piston, they're going down the cylinder wall, and there's an explosion there. And those rings and that film strength are what's keeping that explosion, pushing that piston. So whatever can push around there, that's called blow by. Mm -hmm. Whatever you can eliminate that, you're increasing your power. We don't know how much of that, how much of that fuel economy increase is coming from reducing the sliding friction, and how much is coming from increasing the film strength. That's part of the idea of getting a dyno in here so we can do testing and try and you know figure this out um, but that, that that's an important part of it is increasing that film strength cheers so you won't carry that on to the second and third oil change you will carry the nanocarbon balls plating the inside of your engine that will carry on for some amount of time and we will determine that later uh david sanders says dyno weekend at chris's i'm i work slow down david i'm working on it i'm working on it get, let's get it in here first yeah, you guys are scared. It's for R and D. It's for R and D. It's taking a long time for them to talk me into a dyno. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are making me nervous. Uh, David Berg uh, said the FR three in the engine and TSC in the transmission. He went from fourteen point five mile per gallon to seventeen point six, and best was nineteen point eight. Wow, uh, way more responsive. So great. Thanks for that info, David. We appreciate it. Yeah, that, that's a that's a really big gain. I've seen those before. I've seen those myself on my truck. But, that's impressive. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Overmeyer says, how about two cycle engines? I think you just kind of touched on yeah. that. Uh, David Sanders again says, do you, see, do you see much gain in full synthetic oils? I'm assuming he, he, he means, you know, adding FR3 to full synthetic. Absolutely. Is this Dave Sanders from yeah. Sunbury? Hey, Dave. You yeah. got to stop up sometime. Let me give you a tour. Dave, Dave's actually a member of my car club. Oh, And cool. he had mentioned, uh, you know, he's like, I know, Chris. Come up anytime. We'll stop what we're doing, give you the, the red carpet treatment. I've told you, Dave. Come on by. And yes, it will help in full synthetics because most full synthetics are going to be either a group three, like a mobile, it's going to be a group three. So we're moving on to a group, and Dave knows this because Dave was in the oil business. Yep. Um, so this is going to be a group five synthetic and it's going to be the nano carbon so they are going to help like a mobile or a chevron synthetic well and even to, to that our group four pao blue diamond oils yes we infuse fr3 in it because it helps the group four so yeah the, yeah even our own oils we use the we have seen an increase in performance using the fr3 blended into the pa and it was pretty good before i mean it was really good before so it's even better 
Uh, David Berg says, hey, Kyle, does DWAG have the same properties as EDT? DWAG is EDT with anti-gels added. Right. So we, we basically take the EDT formula and then we add the winter things. There's um, a couple different chemistries we use, but um, the, the three main ones are going to be what we call WASA, um, wax anti-settling agent, um, anti-gels, and then uh, emulsifiers t to help to help get the water pulled up and, and dispersed so that it can't freeze. Right. So those are the three things. You know, the wax can still, even without the WASA, which is a really expensive additive to put in there, um, what happens, what we've seen the last 10 years, is that some of the wax that forms in the newer diesel fuels, for some reason, settles to the bottom. Now that's, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever because wax floats on top of diesel fuel. Okay. So it's, it was like a strange phenomena and nobody really, or nobody that I've met in the industry really understands it all the way, but they understand what it does. So you can have anti-gel, like if you bought power service off the shelf and you put it in there and your, your fuel didn't gel, but then on the bottom you see this white settlement and you're like, boy, where, where'd that come from? Or you see it on your filter. It's like, where did this come from? It's not water. It doesn't seem like wax because it should be floating. Well, the wax settles. So we had to buy this special additive. It's what the U.S. military uses um, on their jets and it's called wax anti-settling agent, WASA. And we put that in there as well just because it's the best of the best and that's what we do here. Yeah. And so if you're, <clears throat> if you're someone who uses EDT regularly, uh, you know, you're safe to switch right over to the DWAG. You're not going to lose any of the benefits of EDT. Um, now, your dosage is going to go up a bit because, again, we are so fully formulated. People are always stunned that, you know, you can get one ounce of EDT will treat 25 gallons. Um, so we want to keep we want to keep that dosage in there so you're still getting that benefit and then the anti-gels on top of that. So you have a little bit of dosage difference, but, uh, but yeah, you still have all the same benefits. Uh, uh, Levi, Levi says, I heard not all turbos are lubricated with engine oil. Well, I have a supercharged vehicle that has its own, you know, it's, it's, it's an isolated, uh, you know, got its own oil. Not all turbos do run off the, the, uh, the motor's oil, but you can still add FR3 to it. I did. I, I have a four ounce reservoir. Isn't that called a supercharger? No, it's still a turbocharger? No, you can have a, you can have a, a non-fed. Okay. And even in my supercharger, it, it literally has a four ounce oil capacity. So I did 5% of four ounces. I mean, I literally syringe dropped into it. And the first thing I noticed was that shutdown line, it just sat there and kept spinning and spinning and spinning. So. And, and full disclosure for everybody in Facebook land, I'm not a car guy. I'm, I'm a maintenance not. guy. <laughs> He's not. I am the, I mean, I can take an engine apart and put it back together, but I am the, I, you know, I drive like old cars, old trucks. I'm more of the tribology guy. I get more into the oils, more into the additives. I get more excited about that than I do about vehicles. I don't even, well, one time I drove a performance vehicle. A rental car company asked me if I wanted to, I stopped, this was down in Nashville. I went to rent a car and they said, do you want um, a Dodge Charger or a Volkswagen Bug? And I said, is that even a choice? And I said, are you serious? And he says, well, I just had to ask. He goes, you know. Oh, Careful, the Volkswagen guy there. <laughs> well, if it's a Dodge Charger, Volkswagen bug, it's like, I've got the Charger. That thing was a blast. Amen. Today. Mopar for the win there. Uh, got a lot more here. Uh, David Sanderson, an overloaded cab over Mac comes to mind when Chris talks about driving truck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the old Mac truck, man. Brian Fidazzo says, can FR3 and Stixon Eliminator both be added during the same oil change? If you want to waste money. Yeah, don't do it. There's no need to. It won't hurt it, but yeah. the Stiction Eliminator has FR3 in it. Yep. Everything that's in FR3 is in Stiction Eliminator, and everything that's in Stiction Eliminator is not in FR3. So this FR Stiction Eliminator was made to be a really good cleaner and a lubricator. FR3 is made to be a really good lubricator and a cleaner. Right. So it's just, you don't need it. Yeah, it's already in there. Like I said, we're, we're fully formulated. You go by your dosage uh, properly. You're not going to gain any more benefit out of it. You're mm -hmm. just going to, you know, waste some money. Um, it sells bottles for us, but you yeah. know, we like to keep be honest with people and uh, save your money. Um, save that bottle of FR3 for your next oil change, <coughs> which we should touch on. I mean, that's what we, we recommend. We recommend mm -hmm. doing a stiction eliminator first, get that full deep clean out, and then on your next two oil changes, switch over to the FR3, mm -hmm. um, and it, that that alone saves you some, some good money there too. Yeah, the just so you understand, the treat rate on the FR3 is half what the Stiction Eliminator is. So that was kind of the reason of developing that chemistry the way we did. 
you know, the station eliminator is it's expensive compared to the other products on the shelf, but it does a lot. So we were thinking, okay, now you got the engine clean. How do you keep it clean and keep it lubricated above what like a mobile or shell can do? So we were able to cut the dosage in half and keep a lot of the same properties by taking some of the cleaners out. And that's what the FR3 is. Mm -hmm. um, another question. Thanks for all the questions, guys. Keep them coming if you get more. Uh, Eric Daniel says, is this like Lucas oil stabilizer then? The answer is no. Uh, I, uh, Comparing I'll, us to Lucas oil stabilizer is like saying, is that electric golf cart like that Tesla? <laughs> it's like, well, no, it's not even close. The electric golf <laughs> cart doesn't even doesn't even measure up to this Tesla. Uh, it's, it, that's it, literally how much difference there is between and them. We actually have we have, a, we have another product that's uh, really more t targeted to what Lucas oil stabilizer. Does. Lucas oil stabilizer, to be frank, is is uh is a base oil it's it's a big it's, it's a, a thick oil stock, yeah. it only has uh less than one percent additive in it fr3 has how much percent additive 100 percent. everything 100 yeah 100 percent. so that answers your question right there one percent additive versus 100 percent additive we we do have a product called tbn booster and that's on the shelf at tractor supply and it was and online too and online at our website everything's available at our website and at our dealers our, our dealer yep. network carries a lot of different products retail you know they got they're really precious with their space so they only want the fast moving items but the total base number is what that stands for tbm booster and it was made for people that were running either extended drains or really heavy duty uh usage so i uh, you know i've got a three-quarter ton van dave sanders will laugh about this you got a three-quarter ton dodge van and you've got like 18 drums of oil in it and you're driving down the road like this um, so <laughs> in that case you're overworking what the engine was was made to do for you. so what what you'll want to do there is use a tbm booster um, tbm booster does have the fr3 built into it but it's also got viscosity improvers and detergent and things to help the rest of the oil package so it's it's made to be a little bit different it's a little bit more robust uh, if you're looking for something like an oil stabilizer, that's probably closer to what you would do. It's actually a really good product to use for that. Yeah, and I, I highly recommend <clears throat> anybody who's using Lucas Oil Stabilizer, give our TBN booster a try. Um, you, the advantages of putting a thick, you know, base oil in your motor to that, that, that you do see out of it, you're going to get that out of our TBN booster, but you're mm -hmm. also, it's guess what our TBN booster has in it? It's got some FR3 in it. Yep. It's got a robust CK4 package. Yep. And uh, it's got a TBN booster in it. So you're gonna get, and it's 100% additive once again. Um, so give it a try. The Lucas Oil Stabilizer guys, give it a try out there and, uh, and we'll see if you like it. But performance wise, like if you're looking to increase performance and mileage, the FR3 is the way. If you're looking to get a more robust oil, so if you wanna buy, um, say you wanna take like a Shell Rotel and make it a premium. I don't know what the Shell Rotel premium is, but putting some TBN booster would do that. Yeah. If you took mobile, like a, a lower level mobile and put TBM booster, that would make it the premium mobile. As a matter of fact, we should probably do a test on that sometime to compare like the synthetic mobile versus the regular mobile with the TBM booster. Right. I'm pretty sure we would beat it because it is, it is really a robust package. It does a great job. Sure does. Um, let's get a little bit back here to uh, a little more of the testing that we did on the FR3 uh, right before we wrap up today. Uh, one thing I wanted to, 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 to mention is so when we did the testing on the FR3, we did the dyno testing against, you know, the top competitor. We, we showed the results of that, the horsepower gains, 4.3% mm -hmm. versus, I think it was 1.1%. One, 1. 1. 1%. Um, we did the, uh, what's your call? G133. G133 testing, you can see the difference on that. So we're showing you the science of the gains that you're gonna have uh, of, of our product. And that's not just our product over you, not using our product, that's, that's the gains over one of the top competitors. Now on top of that, you may wonder how much does this cost me? And so we did a cost comparison and we broke down, um, what we did was a comparison based on a six liter crankcase capacity, which would be a 15 quart motor uh, doing four oil changes per year. And this would be using our two-step system of, you know, run stiction, your first oil change, you run the FR3, oil change number two and number three. And then for that fourth oil change, we go back to stiction once again. and also your displaced oil savings too because we have uh you know you're actually for for as much products you're putting in that's less oil you're using in your motor as well so um and it's, i believe we have this listed on the side i know our, our account execs have it feel free to contact us we'll, we'll show you the, the breakdown of it the total annual cost of 
using our products uh, for a full year for four oil changes on a 15 quart capacity comes out to $102.42. Now we already showed you in Chris's computation, you're gonna save that in your mileage anyway, so mm -hmm. that's gonna pay for itself. Uh, that exact same competitor of ours um, that we have beaten scientifically in our test comes out to uh, the same, same truck, same usage, $257.80 for a total annual cost. So it's uh, $155.38 cheaper per year to use our product um, over the, the, the top competitor on the market. How many um, miles was that? How many miles are you figuring per oil change? I think we based it, let's see. Like 8,000 or 3,000? There were 8,000 8, mile intervals, so they were talking uh, 32,000 uh, miles. So we're talking a, a, you know, a truck really working. This isn't your normal daily driver, so we really put what's, work what's on What's the average mileage on a truck? Like a mm -hmm. pickup truck, you're thinking like 15? Oh, normal, yeah, yeah normal da daily driver, 15,000 miles, we say. So that's 2,100 gallons of, of fuel times $3 times, oops, that'd be, that'd be a savings of $320 just on fuel. So you, you use the Hot Shots product, we're gonna put $200 in your pocket, product's gonna be free, yeah. you're gonna protect your engine, you're gonna have more horsepower, more torque. I mean, let's face it, the engine cost is the biggest thing. If right. you can make an engine last twice as long between a rebuild, now most gas people don't rebuild engines, they just buy new cars, but if you got a diesel truck, you, especially if it's before 2008, you want it to last forever, you know? So you're, you, it's really worth your while to use that. If you know somebody that has a diesel truck, get a gift package for them off our website and get it to them for Christmas. Yeah. Uh, a couple more things popped up here. Uh, Bob Morris had just put FR3 in my F-150 today for the first time. Great, Bob, thanks for, thanks for trying the product. Um, message us, post up next time. Uh, let, let's know uh, the results you got out of it. We're, we'd, be, we'd be happy to, to hear about that. Uh, Tom Perini, one of our uh, oh. one of our racers, uh, you guys have probably seen the Hot Shots wrapped uh, 63 split window Corvette Pro Mod. Uh, Tom says, FR3 works well on my gas powered race engine. We use it in our family cars, motorcycle and diesel lawnmower. So I mean, everything, you know, it's like, Thank you, Tom. We, actually, we actually hear that a lot too. Uh, people put FR3, they, we had the funniest uh, uh, customer call in with a review that said, um, it's kind of like the hot sauce lady. I don't think I can say, say, say the word on, on Facebook, but you know, he said he puts that on everything. And he's like, if metal touches metal, he's like, I put it on my door hinges. I put it on my garage door. I put it on my refrigerator door. I mean, if metal touches metal, FR3 will help, I promise you. Okay. <laughs> so uh, Randy Jensen asks, is Stixon Eliminator for gas and diesel or just diesel? No, it's absolutely for both. You can put this in uh, gas or diesel applications. Um, any type of oil, really, the you know, from a conventional yeah. to a synthetic, it's good. Yeah, we got to come up with a marketing campaign. Wasn't there like a deodorant strong enough for a man, but made for a woman? Mm -hmm. We need like strong enough for a diesel, made for a gas or something. Sure, we'll work on that. Yeah. <laughs> you could tell I'm in the marketing, man. <laughs> That's my thing. <laughs> uh, oh, both gas and diesel. Tom, Tom, just to re respond to him. He only has gas diesels or gas vehicles. So Tom, I know Tom is a, is a big fan that uses a lot of our products. So the, the, on the gas vehicles with a stiction eliminator, if you've got anything over 50 to 75,000 miles, you should run just an, uh, I think it's a 12 ounce, 16 ounce bottle. You don't need that much. Yeah. No, you can use an eight ounce. Yeah, use like an eight ounce bottle of stiction eliminator. Five port, you know. Yeah, you, you'll see a difference uh, just like within the first 500 miles. You'll, if, you'll if you're a used car lot owner. Oh yeah. Invest in a ten dollar bottle of FR three on one of your one of your high mileage vehicles. You'll be able to get more money out of it when you sell it. I yeah. promise you'll get more than ten dollars off the selling price you're asking now. Yeah. Uh, so we're getting kind of the end here. You want to wrap up? Yeah. Let's. Uh, any other announcements or anything? Well, let's give some shout outs to some of the new dealers and fleets that come on board. We always like to do that. We appreciate uh, um, all of our of our dealers out there, and uh, we've really, I mean, really been booming lately. A lot of new dealers coming on board and. Uh, we, we like to see that. So uh, we got corn fed diesel uh, out in Walton, Indiana. I got a side note saying they're killing it. So, uh, so good job out there, Justin. We appreciate you uh, coming aboard and carrying the products. Uh, diesel WRX in Gulfport, Mississippi. Uh, Heavy's Automotive in Windsor Locks, Connecticut. Shout out to Sam and Dan there. 
And we got Joe Bush Ag Repair uh, in Boone, Iowa. What else we got? DGN Auto Repair in Midland, Pennsylvania. Uh, hey to Daryl out there. And up in Canada, we've been having a lot in Canada too. So uh, Hell on Wheels up there. Uh, Edmonton. Edmonton, Canada, yep. So I believe that, I believe that's Randy Harrop. So I'll have to double check on that. Is that Randy's? I think it is. If it is, Randy, hey, good job, bud. Uh, thanks for coming aboard. And is that it? Well, we do have uh, the reminder of our winter stock up bundle here. Again, this is a great deal here. If a uh, great early Christmas gift. Yes. Um, so again, 99 bucks. This is all you need for the whole winter right here. You're gonna get your sticks and aluminum clean out, your diesel extreme for the fuel side clean out, and all the fuel additive you need all the, with the winter anti-gel already in it, ready to go for, for the winter. We should give some FR3 bottles away. We should give some FR3. And we had, you know, we had a lot of good questions today. So um, how many bottles do you want to give away, Chris? Five. He's giving five away. All right. So uh, let's see if we have Eric Daniels. Why don't you shoot us uh, your address and we'll get that out to you. Uh, let's see. David Berg. Why don't you shoot us your address? You private message us. We'll get you a bottle of FR3. Rich Sprenzel, shoot us an address. We'll get that to you. And David Sanders, I think we know him. He should try the FR3. Is that five? Thank I think you. so. All right, if I didn't get to five, I'll uh, we'll, uh, we'll update you on, on, on the end of there and. Uh, uh, keep, keep track. And for those of you that get a bottle of over three, feel free to post up on our Facebook page. Let us know how, how, how you feel about it and, and, and post your results. We, always, we love getting feedback from you guys. That's how we, that's how we formulate our products is really consumer Absolutely. driven and solving your problems. So, you um, so for another cold Friday, icy Friday here in Ohio, yeah. the snow's still coming down here. I hope you guys are somewhere warmer. Have, have a great weekend. Good luck next week on Thanksgiving. We'll, we'll be back yeah, next Friday. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. We're not going to see you before that. So, you know, happy we'll, Thanksgiving to everybody. And we will have a Friday one next week. We'll be here the day after Thanksgiving on Friday. And Some of we'll, us will be. Yeah, we'll be getting ready for our Cyber Monday push and our Black Friday. Black Friday. Yep. So, oh, so we'll have a Black Friday show next week. Hey, that's a good idea. Maybe we'll come up with a really good special, see if we can outdo Levi's Cyber Monday. Yeah, there we go. So, <laughs> All right. so thanks for everybody watching. We'll see you next Black Friday. We'll see you. Have a great weekend. Happy Thanksgiving.